Welcome back, Mr. Cody's math class. And today we're solving for y once again. Exactly. Solving for y once again. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six total questions. We've got the same exact box over here, slope intercept form. We also have some nice instructions here. We need to isolate the y value, which just means get the y by itself. That's what we were doing in the warm up. We also need to do that by moving the x term and then finishing with divide. Not every question works like that, but to be honest, a lot of questions work like that. So, just getting started, nice and focused, not distracted by phones or headphones or computers or maybe even just food. Number one, we need to move the x term and then divide. So, let's move the x term. What are we going to do? Minus 2x, minus 2x. I should have 2y equals negative 2x minus 6. What up? I discovered something for number 5. When we get to number 5, it's number here. Sounds good. I'm excited to hear. So for number 1, we're going to finish with divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. And so we have y equals, now what is negative 2 divided by 2? 1. Negative 1, make sure you got that negative there. What is negative 6 divided by 2? Negative 3. Negative 3, and so we should be able to grab the m, grab the b, negative 1, negative 3, not too bad. I think example 1, pretty easy. Not really stressing example 1 very much. So, um, no, not till after notes. Number 2. Looking at example number two here, line down the equal sign. Number two is going to be a little bit more difficult. We have negative 1x, and how do we want to move that x? By adding plus 1x to both sides. Yep, love that, plus 1x on both sides, nice and easy. Remember, these two numbers do combine. not combine. What's up? Hey, let's go back to our seat, please. The last thing I need is for you to distract me and do my job for me. Thank you. Heading all the way back. I appreciate that. Keep going. So, these do not combine. 9 plus 1 is not 10. We're going to have 3y equals... I just took a break and talked for about 30 seconds. 1x plus 9. All we did was move the 1 by doing plus 1 on both sides. And we're going to finish by dividing everything by 3. We've been doing these algebra type questions for a long time. These aren't too bad. Now, doing this one, uh, right, exactly. I'm seeing this 1 divided by 3. That's kind of ugly. So let's go to Desmos. Click, click. Desmos is low. I did hear the correct answer. It is 1 divided by 3. I get a decimal. Hit the fraction button is still 1 divided by 3. So y equals 1 divided by 3, x plus, and then we have 9 divided by 3. I know that one. That's a 3. Now, I did have a question earlier in the day. A student said, Mr. Collier, does the x go on the top or afterwards or on the bottom when it comes to these fractions? Where does the x go? And so I showed them three different options here, all right? We've got one-third. Let me zoom out a little bit. We've got one-third. We can put the x on top. We can do one-third x afterwards, and we can do one-third x with the bottom. Now, we've got three graphs here. The red one has the x on top. Does this look like a normal graph that we've seen before? It looks pretty normal. Then we've got the middle graph, which is blue, does this look like a normal graph that we've seen before? Yeah. Then we've got the third graph, which is green. How does this look? This looks really weird. This looks crazy. We've got some weird curves. It looks ridiculous. We're going to maybe get to this later in the year. Definitely, it's an Algebra 2 type question Aaron, as well. Aaron. What are you saying? I said Aaron, Aaron. I don't even really know what that means. But the good news is that helps us out. I'm saying the graph is all over. 
Oh, I see what you're saying. I got you. I got Aaron, you. Aaron, oh. <laughs> so number three, this one with the X on the bottom is bad. That gives you two options. Basically, the X is not a bottom X. I don't care if the X comes after. I don't care if the X goes on top, but the X really shouldn't be on the bottom. That means that our M is one third, that our B is three. And can we get fraction answers? Yes. Are we going to get fractions on the classwork? Yes. Are we going to get fractions for the Bs? Yes. 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 Fractions are legit. All right. Number three. You try. Give you. Give you about a minute. Let's go. A minute. Number three. Can you try it? Where were you for the first 10 minutes of class? When I just got I told you I went to fill up my water and then I went to the office. Okay. You said you did the office? I didn't want to come. Okay. Um, make a pass and I'll accept it. All right, about 20 seconds left. Can you figure out what number three is? It's really not a long question. Maybe the focusing on the paper and not the phone is a good start. All right, well, we got 10 seconds left. Okay, for number three, we're going to divide by five. And guess what? That's pretty much it for the whole question. Divide by 5, we're going to be done. Y equals 10 divided by 5. Wait, why? That's a 2. Why? Oh, and what's negative 5 divided by 5? Negative 1. Negative 1. So we're done. Oh, okay. oh, what were you going to do? I was about to subtract um, 10 from both sides. Mm, no, because the Y is already here. So the Y doesn't need to go anywhere. Oh, that's what I did. So we need to move the five. <laughs> what did you do? This is pretty much the only way to do it. We got we got to divide, like well, leave the Y alone. So yeah, it, it's all it, not obvious. It's, it's easy, I should say. You see the Y here? Okay, you see the Y here? On these questions, the X is on the same side as the Y, so the X needs to go away. On this question, the X is already on a different side. The X doesn't need to go. The X can just. The X has to be alone, not near the Y. The X is never going to be lonely necessarily, but the the X needs to be away from the Y. Right? Remember. Y equals MX plus B. The Y is all alone, and the X needs to stay over there on the right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> We're not, yeah. I'm sorry. Keep trying. You got to can only do so much. Number four is one of the longest questions of the day, but it's not necessarily more difficult. If you look at this one, we have a Y on the left side and we have three things on the left we got everything on the left and we got a lot of moving to do we got to move the couch we got to move the chair we got to move the ottoman we got to move everything what do you want to move first over to the right side what you say sure the x that's fine minus 5x minus 5x on both sides 7y minus 21 equals minus 5x Pause. I know I had to get the door, so I went a little fast. You're okay. All I did was move the X, because I need that X to be on the other side. Wow. Look, we started right here, where the five's on the left. You got it? You, you with me? Yeah. And then we just moved it to the right. That's all we did. Just a simple move. The same thing we've done for like... I mean, it's zero. Like zero minus five, it's just, just minus five. I'm saying people like a bigger number than zero. 
then yeah, it would it would still be there, but it's it's not gonna be. Now, what's next? Let's move to 21. Plus 21, plus 21. So here's something, right, like you were saying. These two numbers, they're not going to combine, right? Because the 5 has an X, and the other question does not. I thought you going to go to the bathroom. My own business? Go ahead. 7Y equals... Over on this side, we've got 5x and we've got 21 5X. minus 5x plus 21. Mm -hmm. They're not going to combine. They're going to stay separate. And then let's finish with divide. Divide by 7, divide by 7, divide by 7. So we're going to have y equals a fraction. I'm seeing negative 5 divided by 7. I go to Desmos and I type it in. Negative 5 divided by 7. Yuck. Hit the fraction button. And it's still a fraction. Negative 5 divided by 7. No big deal. Let's save this thing into later, please. We're in the middle of notes. Well, we're on 5, right? Then we're on, we're on question number 4. 21 divided by 7. I know what that is. That's 3. And so we can get our answer, negative 5 divided by 7, and the B is 3. Okay, we had to move the 5x. That's not very hard. Minus 5x minus 5x. Then we had to move the 21, plus 21 plus 21. Then we had to finish with divide. Divide, divide, divide. Use Desmos. Not that bad. Okay. It's still up on the board. It's been up on the board plenty. Number five, line down the equal sign. Number five is probably the weirdest one that we're going to do all day. Normally, we're looking for that Y to be on the left. Number five is the only one where it's on the right. What do you think, Ronald? What are you scheming up? Okay, so basically, I did this problem two ways. First yeah. off, I moved the Y to the... Um, Yep, that's how we're going to do it, and minus 2y. I after I already moved the y. Yep, so, but that's the way to do it. You can also just move the 12 and then leave the y on itself on that side, and it'll still get the same answer. Yep, you're right. I like that. The way we're going to do it, let's get that y to the left, because we just do the same thing every time. We're going to be in business. So move the y to the left. That's going to give me negative 2y minus 3x equals negative 12. doesn't really matter what order that you put these in. As long as they do not combine, the Y's and X's do not mix. And we did one step. We started with the weirdest question of the day. Okay, gotcha. Confusioner is not a word, but all we did is move some furniture around. We moved the Y to the left. That's it. Okay? Now, we're going to move some more furniture. Same stuff the whole time. Plus 3x plus 3x. Okay. Nope. Negative 2y equals 3x minus 12. And we're going to finish using divide. Just like always. All we did is move it, move it, divide it. Which is literally the same thing we do for every question. Move it, move it, divide it. Right? Question one was a move, divide. Question two was a move, divide. Question three was a move, divide. Actually, question three was only a divide. It was even easier. Okay? Wait, what? Divide by negative two. Divide by negative two. What did you say? Whatever number is in front of y, you always need to move that using divide. You're right. So the last step, like since that negative 2 is on the y, the last step will always be divide by that number. Okay, I got 3 divided by negative 2. Desmos, 3 divided by negative 2. There we go, goodness, sorry. And it just says negative 3 halves. y equals negative 3 halves. Then we've got negative 12, negative 2. Two negatives 
is going to make a positive, right? If I type it in, negative 12 divided by negative 2, positive 6. So, positive 6, negative 3 halves over 6, or negative 3 halves is m, and b is 6, I should say. All right, we've been doing well. There's literally one question left, and we're done with notes for the day. We are going to give you a minute. You try. Can you handle number six? We got the classwork coming. Take a deep breath. All you got to do, move stuff around, and then finish with divide. Move stuff around, and then finish with divide. Find your why. We're not going to be moving that why. We're going to move everything else. Deep breath. You're going to be okay. Try it out. We're going to work on this together in like 40 seconds. So no, no worries. We're okay. You want me to go over and do notes twice as long? Is that what you want? No, but at least let us try for ourselves because I know half of these people in here. I gave you, with the six questions I gave you, try to. Yeah, because I'm definitely confused. Yes. What is this? You gotta do. You gotta do it though. Come on. 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 For this question, I see that we have a negative 8y, and we have a 4x. The y is not going to move. The y is already on the left. The y is already in a good spot. We need to move the 4x. So we're going to do minus 4x on both sides. Now, this reminds me of number 4. Number 4, we also had zeros. We got number 6 which has another zero. Renaya, we got one question left. I just need to get through one more question, please. Minus 8y equals 0 minus 4. That's going to be minus 4x. If you want to write a plus 0, like, you know, I guess you can write plus 0. Doesn't matter, but if you want, you can. And then Let's finish with divide, right? Just move it, divide it. There's not a lot to this, guys. I'll be honest with you. I I'm surprised that we're as stressed as we are during this. It's literally the 10th question we're doing in a row where all you do is move it and divide it. We're going to finish with divide. Divide by negative 8. You know, we don't need this 0, right? But, but if you put a 0, that's fine. We can divide. Sure, we'll just do it for fun, right? 0 is a number 2, right? Yeah. So we should have, at the end of the day, y equals one half, one half x plus zero. plus zero. Okay. Now, what would our m be? One half. And what would our e? Zero. zero. It would be zero. Right. The m is one half. And the B is zero. What's your question? Uh, was number four for M negative five over seven and B three? Yes. Okay. All right. Remember at the top, slope intercept Y equals MX plus B. Isolate the Y value. Remember that we did in the warm up. Here it is. This question, Y equals X. Don't forget this one from yesterday. The M is one and the B is zero. All right, time for classwork.